Hi, I'm Pastor LaDonna, and I am one of the associate pastors here at Maytown Assembly of God. I want to welcome you here today. Thanks for joining. It's my privilege to bring the word to you today. Let's go ahead and open up with prayer. Lord Jesus, we just come before you and we ask, Holy Spirit, that you come. We ask that you would fill this place and that you would fill every home and every heart, Lord. I ask, Lord God, that you would just speak to each one of us, Lord God, in what you are wanting to say today, Lord God, and I just pray that your will would be done in this place. Lord, I just, Holy Spirit, I pray that I would decrease and you would increase that I would decrease and you would increase, God. Father, I pray for your anointing, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So a couple weeks ago, I had spoke on bitterness of life, and I had mentioned that it's a little bit different than um, bitterness from unforgiveness, but that I had a desire to come and talk to you about forgiveness. And um, so... I totally realized that Pastor George spoke on forgiveness last week also. Um, it just kind of happened that way in his parable, and um, we don't compare notes. I don't try to pick up his series or anything. And so, um, anyway, so, but I, I think that I can just build upon um, maybe and have different, um, a different light on, on some, some things with forgiveness. And so, um, we'll go ahead and give it a try and see what happens. Um, so I just kind of want to touch on some basics of forgiveness. I would like to talk about what forgiveness is, what forgiveness is not, why do we need forgiveness, and how do we go about forgiving. So the first thing that I would like to talk about um, about or the bring up is that forgiveness first comes from God. It's in Him that we are able to find forgiveness and that we're able to forgive others. Nehemiah 19 verse 17 b says, But you are a God of forgiveness, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. God is a God of forgiveness. He is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. In Ephesians 1, 7 and 9, it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of wrongdoings according to the riches of his grace, which he lavishes on us in all wisdom and insight. He made known to us the majesty of his will according to his good pleasure, which he set forth in him. So we have forgiveness through his blood according to his riches and grace are the riches of His grace. Forgiveness comes from God. He has been forgiving since the beginning of time for man. Uh, Adam and Eve first sinned, and God chose to make a way for them to find forgiveness and for us to find forgiveness. This message of, of forgiveness is all throughout the Old Testament that we can read. Um, Israel would, it would serve him and then they would go to, to uh, find other gods and then God would forgive them. One of my favorite scriptures um, is in Second Chronicles and it says that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, then I would hear from heaven and I would forgive them, forgive them of their sins and heal their land. That's probably a little bit of a paraphrase. But God is in the forgiveness business. That is, that is what he does. Jesus also modeled forgiveness for us. Jesus came to earth so that we can be reconciled to God. He, his own people that he was sent to rejected him. They rejected him 
and then crucified him. They beat him, mocked him, spat upon him, called him names. And yet on the cross in um, Luke 23:34, his response to them was, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. This word forgive in the Greek means to dismiss, release, pardon. It's also used um, in to set something go, or let something go or to cancel a debt. Um, some commentaries, um, I believe it's it's set, set things free. Um, but I might not be right on the free part. Um, but I, I do know that it is to let something go. I was kind of amazed by that when I was reading that um, in, the, in the Greek because um, there's one of those statements out there, let it go and be free. Maybe that's where I got the free from. Um, but to let go, there's an action there or to cancel a debt. The Webster's Dictionary um, defines forgiveness as to cease to feel resentments against an offender, to pardon, forgive one's enemy, to give up resentments of a claim to requital, or to grant relief from payments of um, or to forgive a debt. So forgiveness is a decision that we make to release something, someone from the wrong that they did to us. It is like saying, you don't owe me anything, or I'm no longer going to try to get even or to get back at you for what you did. Last week, Pastor discussed, discussed some of that with the parable um, for the, the unforgiving slave in Matthew 18. Here was a man that owed a huge debt that he was never going to be able to pay. And because he pleaded for forgiveness, his master forgave him. However, that slave decided that he was going to go shake up the people that owed his money, him money, and um, however, he wasn't so forgiving for them and threw them into prison um, until they could pay their debt. So I'm going to pick that up in, this is Matthew 18, um, in 32. Then summoning him, his master said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you the debt because you pleaded with me. Should you have not also had mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his master moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he would repay all that he owed him. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you did not, does not forgive from your heart. Forgiveness is something that God gives to us. And in response to that, we should be able to forgive those that wronged us or owe us something. Now, I know that that don't always feel easy, and it doesn't. It, you know, it's not always the easiest thing to do, but it is possible to be done. Forgive, forgiveness is choosing to forgive that debt that is owed to you. It's in obedience to God. In Luke 17, 3 and 4, it says, Be on guard if your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times a day and returns to you seven times, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. We should always be willing to forgive those that hurt us. Regardless of what walk of life that you've been on or where you've been, we have all, in one way or another, 
sinned against another person and we definitely have sinned against God and we have done some things that just aren't right and God gives us a command to forgive he tells us to forgive those that has harmed us in Ephesians 4 um, at 32 and 33 it says all bitterness wrath anger clam clamor and slander must be removed from you along with all malice be kind to one another compassionate forgiving each other just as God also forgave you God tells us over and over and over again throughout the New Testament throughout Scripture that we must come to this place of forgiveness that we must forgive those that have wronged us in Matthew 6 9 through 15 Jesus is teaching the disciples how to pray and he says pray then in this way our Father who is in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we also forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from evil for if you forgive other people for their offenses your heavenly father also will forgive you but if you do not forgive other people then your father will not forgive your offenses we forgive because if not will not be forgiven for our sins just as in the parable of the servant who was forgiven of much when he chose not to forgive those that owed him little then that forgiveness was taken away and he was thrown into prison I'm not saying God's gonna throw you into prison I'm saying that God wants us to extend the same amount of forgiveness that he has forgiven us with In Mark 11, in, in 25, it says, And whenever you stand praying, forgive your offense. But if you do not forgive, I'm sorry, in 25, And when you stand and pray, forgive um, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive your offenses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your offenses forgiveness is not something that we're gonna feel and for many of us it may take some time um, to bring something to the cross repeatedly over and over until we are delivered from our unforgiveness forgiving somebody may feel impossible because of the hurt and damage that happened to you but God is able to do the work in your heart I know even in my own life I've had some unspeakable things happen um, to me um, some things that I thought that I would never be able to forgive but you know working with God he is such a gentleman I mean, he didn't condemn me and say oh you're such a bad person because you have this no he worked he worked with me and as I brought those things to the Lord as I brought them to the cross he he began to heal me and he help me to forgive those people that harm me God is able to do that type of work in your heart in Hebrews 4 uh, 15 it says for we do not have a high priest who couldn't who cannot sympathize with our weakness but one who has been tempted in all things just as we are yet was without sin Jesus modeled forgiveness for us when he died on the cross. He was a perfect man without sin. He came to earth to bring salvation to the world, and yet the world rejected him. They called him names. They beat him. They mocked him. They spit upon him. They nailed him on a cross and mocked him some more. And what was his response? Father, forgive them for what they do for they know not what they do.
God knows our feelings. He knows what it's like to have to forgive somebody that has hurt him so deeply. And he chose to do it freely. And he's going to give us those things too. He sympathizes with us and knows those things that we, we go through. And he will make a way. He will make a way to bring healing to, to our hearts. The more we choose to let go, the easier it gets to leave it at the foot of the cross. Each time it comes up, we bring it to the Lord and say, Here I am again, Lord, with this same thing. I'm choosing to forgive because that's what you require. There are things that I still have to bring into, in before the Lord. When I start thinking of some past hurts or if that comes up, I automatically now, I bring it to the cross, even if I feel like I have forgiven that person, and I bring that and I say, okay, God, here this is again. This is here again, and this is what I'm feeling, and this is, this. I don't know how to get rid of this, so this is all that I know how to do is to be obedient, and I am choosing to forgive this person right now for the harm that they did. The other thing that I've done is I've prayed blessing over those people that have hurt me, which has not always been the easiest thing. And at first, I prayed, okay, Lord, bless them, but bless them with salvation because that's the only blessing that I could figure to pray over them that uh, would be sufficient because I know that God wishes that no one would perish. And so... I started there. Now I'm able to pray um, for blessing in, in, in other areas that they would be blessed in, in you know, where they're going in their lives and, and that, that God would meet them where they are. I'm, I'm able to pray those blessings. But it wasn't always like that. Like I said, when God first told me to start praying blessing over somebody that I felt hurt me greatly, it was one of the hardest things I had to do. I could barely get the words out. But as I began to pray, God began to take off some of that hardness of heart. Let's talk about some of those things that forgiveness, let's talk about those things that forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not about the other person. It's about you. It is about your offense. In Mark 11:25, and whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anybody or anyone, so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you of your offense. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your offenses. It doesn't say wait for that person to come and apologize. Nowhere in, their, in the Bible have I read that you're to wait for somebody to apologize before you forgive them or wait for somebody to repent and get saved before you forgive them. Nowhere have I read that. What I read is you take care of your offense in your heart. If you don't forgive, you can't be forgiven, and it is not dependent upon the other person. That other person does not even need to know that you have anything against them. You just need to do business between you and God with that forgiveness. Unforgiveness in your heart is harmful to you, not the other person. It can cause a lot of physical and spiritual um, issues for those that hold on to unforgiveness in their heart. I, you know, um, there are have been links to unforgiveness and different ailments in the body just feeling bitter and and um, unforgiving can wreak havoc upon upon your body it, and, and your spiritual life also you forgiving somebody is not dependent upon whether or not that person even knows that they hurt you or that you have forgiven them. Forgiveness is something that you do with God. So it's between you and God. Forgiveness is between you and God. And I'm not saying that there's, there'll never be time where you need to go and, and somebody comes to you and asks for forgiveness and you tell them that you forgive them. That may happen. I mean, that's happened in my life. I've had people come and ask me for forgiveness and I have forgiven them. Um, there's been times people will ask me for forgiveness and I had no clue even that an offense happened. So 
um, it's really not, I just want you to get that it's really not dependent upon another person. It's really dependent upon your heart. You don't want to harden your heart towards, towards others. You don't want a hard heart towards God. You don't want that bitterness living within you because that bitter root can, can spring up and cause so many different problems in your life. Forgiveness is something that we do because it's an obedience to God. It has nothing to do with the other person. It's really about us and God. Also, um, when we forgive somebody, it does not take away that other person's responsibility in the matter. They still have to do business with God. So, and what I mean by that is that we, we each have to own our own sin. We each have to confess our sins. And even if we as a person forgive something, somebody, that doesn't mean that that person has, that, that guilt has been taken away yet. It just means that we have decided that we're not going to hold them responsible for our pain anymore. So in Galatians 6, 7, and 8, it says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a person sows, this he will also reap. For um, the one who sows to his flesh will reap destruction from his flesh, but the one who sows to the Spirit will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So each of us has the responsibility before God to repent for our sins. And so it does not remove that person's guilt or sin from, from what they did. And this is especially true because I know for some people it's really hard to forgive. Like if there's been trauma in somebody's life, somebody's been raped, molested, um, a divorce, stuff like that. It's, it's really hard when somebody has been wronged to, to say, oh, well, if I forgive, then that just lets that person off the hook. No, it doesn't that person still has to do business with God. And that is between him and God, or them and God, her and God. That's between them and God, right? We just need to take care of our part and clean up our side of the street and make sure that our hearts are right with God. Because that, is, that would be our sin, is that unforgiveness. They still need the anointing blood of Christ to wipe out their sin. Just as it is with us, that blood, that blood of Christ washes away sin and for for that to happen for that other person's wrongs to be um for to be removed is they need to be forgiven by christ and they need to ask christ for forgiveness and um in hebrews 9 22 it says and almost all things are cleansed with blood according to the law and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness and so when we bring those things to the cross, really what we're doing is we're bringing our sin of unforgiveness to the blood of Jesus and allowing it to wash us. That other person, that's be, their offense and what they did, that's between God and them. And when they come to the foot of the cross, you know what? The beauty is, is that God will also cover them with, with, with his blood and forgive their sins. But it does take that person to come to Christ and repent to be forgiven. It doesn't release them from... Um, your forgiveness doesn't release them from the guilt of what they did. Only Christ can release them. And um, just because you forgive somebody does not mean that you have to be that person's best friend. There are people in my life that I have forgiven. I truly have forgiven. No ill will towards them at all, um, but um, to protect myself and my family, um, that person in particularly will never have anything to do with me or my children again. And so, um, but that's a protective thing. And that doesn't mean that I don't forgive them. I do forgive them. Um, but I'm also going to protect myself in that. And I don't have to be, I don't have to be friends. I don't have to have them in my life 
um, in order to forgive them. I can forgive them and they can, they can live their own life and I can live mine and there's nothing wrong with that. And I, um, the scripture that I pulled from that was about um, something that happened between Paul and Barnabas. And so in Acts 15, 37 through 40, it talks about um, Barnabas and um, Barnabas wanted to take John, called Mark, along with them. But Paul was of the opinion that they should not take them along with them. Um, this man had, um, who had deserted them in Pap Papilla and had gone with them to the, and had not gone on, I'm sorry, let me try that again. Barnabas wanted to take John and Mar um, called Mark along with them, but Paul was of the opinion that they should not take along with them this man who had deserted them in Pump Pumpalaya and had not gone with them um, to, the, to the work. Now to turn into such a sharp disagreement that they separated from one another and Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and left after being entrusted by brothers to the grace of the Lord. So sometimes it's okay to part ways. You know, and I, 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 I'm sure that Paul forgave um, Barnabas and Mark. Um, I am, but I know that it's just not always necessary for you to have somebody in your life um, if there is that much disagreement, it's okay. It's okay to choose and not to be around unhealthy people. It's not always healthy or productive to have those type of people in your life. Um, and that's especially true if, um, if there was trauma. Um, but you can still forgive and just not have that person involved. So the next thing that I would like to bring out about forgiveness is, is that we can truly forgive but still need healing for tra from the trauma around that event. Sometimes we can be hurt so deeply that even though we have worked through um, everything um, in forgiveness, there is still some hurt that needs healing. This is especially um, true for deep-rooted trauma and hurt. This type of work may need um, to happen in layers. It is forgiveness, it's, it is forgiveness, but also in, inner healing needs to happen too. So, some, you know, sometimes you just, you just need healing and you can bring things before the cross and the enemy will try to condemn you um, because you still have some hurts. The enemy will try to condemn you and say, oh, no, you didn't do this. You didn't forgive. Oh, you're, you're this, you're that. But you know what? Sometimes this stuff is, takes layers. Sometimes you have layers um, to, to remove. And sometimes forgiveness works that too. Um, you have to get specific. Maybe these hurts happened and they're more than once. Um, and maybe there's more than one hurt. And so maybe they're stacked upon, stacked upon, stacked upon. I know when I worked forgiveness, and, and I'm just going to give a shout out to Bobby uh, Meyer, who actually helped me work through a lot of my forgiveness and a lot of, a lot of my deliverance. Um, she helped me through a lot of, of that with forgiveness. And some of the things that I've learned through her, I still use even in counseling today. Um, that there are layers, that so you need to be specific with the hurts that happened, and that um, yes, as they come up, then you choose to forgive them, you get your feelings involved, and, and, and you allow God to heal you in those areas, and you ask God to heal you in those areas. I wanted to go through some practical steps um, in your prayer for forgiveness. Um, first, be specific. Just like I was saying a minute ago, be specific of each offense. Um, will a blanket, blanket forgiveness work? Okay, yeah, sometimes blanket forgiveness is work. If, if, if the offense wasn't too deep, if there wasn't a lot there, you, you, it, there's a blanket offense. But really when there is some deep-seated, rooted hurt and pain, a lot of times you have to go through incidents by incidents, especially if, you, if they come up and you hold them to your mind or they, they're brought to your mind. 
um, regularly, that is something that you need to to bring out one by one and allow the Holy Spirit to to help you to forgive and also heal those areas of your life. Be specific. And if there is more than one, go by each one, one by one. There's no race. There's no race to get through this. It's not like we have arrived. I've been working on forgiveness and, and working on, on, on inner healing for 20 years. There, there's no healing. I am a lot better than what I once was 20 years ago. But I still today, I was driving down the road and something popped in my mind um, yesterday. And so, and I, I just right there took that to the foot of the cross and said, Lord, you know that I have forgiven this, but there's something there. And I began to speak blessing over that person's life um, and, and, and release that again. And in obedience to Christ, I don't want that stuff there. But stuff will creep in and, put it, and, and be put right back in, into my head. And so sometimes we just have to bring it before the foot of Christ as it comes. One by one, bring them there. The next thing I want to say is get your emotions involved. God, this is how I felt. This person hurt me in this felt and I this way and I felt disrespected, I felt lonely, I felt belittled. Whatever that is, I was angry. Whatever those feelings are, get them involved in that forgiveness. What was the offense? How did it affect you? How did it impact your life? How does it still make you feel? Are you still having fe those feelings come up for you? And if you know, you're remembering that stuff as they come up, do you still get angry when you remember it? Those are the things that you need to confess before the Lord. Bring that and say, hey, Lord, I'm still feeling this, this feeling of anger. Take responsibility for your part. I would love to say that I had no responsibility in anything that ever happened to me ever before and it just all happened to me and everybody else was wrong. But that's not true. Even in some of the deepest uh, hurts of my life, I can find where I played a part in that. And whether that was that I played a part by making a decision, by allowing somebody in my life, or whether that was I played a part with attitudes or beliefs or, or whatever that is. That is something that I need to take responsibility for. I need to clean up my side of the street too. I need to repent for that. And also repent for the unforgiveness in any bitterness that, you, that may have taken root. Unforgiveness is a sin. And when we hold unforgiveness and bitterness in our heart, we kind of tie the Father's hands in order to forgive us. We need to be able to repent for that so that we can be fully forgiven. I know that that sounds kind of hard and it's, you know, harder to bring it out preaching than you think it is. Uh, but I know the truth. And if I, if I haven't lived it myself, I wouldn't bring it I wouldn't bring it out uh, in, in a message. Um, and I stand here today because God has truly healed me and, and I have been able to truly forgive um, things in my life. And I know that you can too. Forgiveness is essential for our salvation. God is a God of forgiveness. And he models forgiveness for us. It is something that he commands for us to do and our forg forgiveness is really contingent upon if we are able to forgive. However, forgiveness is something that God will give you the ability to do. So it's just not something that he expects to make you do on your own, but he gives you the tools. He gives you everything that you need in order to forgive. He will teach you. He will guide you. He will not leave you as orphans and expect you to do it all alone. He's going to hold you by the hand and walk you through it. And just as he, he just as, uh, just as he guides us to forgive those that have wronged us, he has also forgiven us of our wrongs. And so I'd like to close with some prayer. Um, I hope that this um, message um, touched you in some way. I really tried not to repeat everything that Pastor said, and so 
Um, um, and I hope it just kind of built upon, upon what he preached yesterday, just to kind of give some practical ways. Um, so, uh, anyway, thank you for joining me. I do want to close with a prayer. And, well, I want to pray through some things. So um, go ahead and uh, get comfortable in prayer, whatever that is for you, whether that's bowing your head, closing your eyes, eyes open. Uh, wherever you you can let's let's pray together let's pray about this forgiveness thing Heavenly Father Father we repent right now for anything that we have held and against some anybody in our lives Lord we ask that you would forgive us Lord we ask that you would come and forgive us of our sins Lord I repent right now for any unforgiveness that I have Lord, for anyone that has caused me hurt or harm, Lord, I choose this day to forgive them. I choose this day to lay it down. I don't want any bitter root to take place in my heart, Lord. And so, Lord, I give it to you, and I choose to forgive. Lord God, I just ask, Lord God, that um, you would come in um, to our hearts, Lord, and bring up things that might be there right now, Lord God. Bring up those things that might be hindering us, Lord God, in our walk with you. Father, if there is unforgiveness, Lord, bring it to our minds so that we're able to um, confront it, so that we're able to address it and bring it to you, Lord God. Father, help us to feel the emotions that keep that thing bound to us, Lord God. And Lord, let's do business with you, Lord God. Father, I ask that you would bring healing upon the hearts, Lord God, of those that have been through trauma, those that have been hurt so deeply, Lord, that it is so hard, Lord God, to even imagine how we could possibly start to forgive. Lord, I pray that you would just be with them right now, Lord, that you would touch their hearts, that you would send your comforter, Lord, around them, Lord God, that as these emotions start coming up, Lord God, that you would wrap your arms around them and let them know that they are not alone that you are there with them and that you will never leave them nor forsake them lord and heal those areas of their heart i ask that in the name of jesus lord and father if there's anyone who does not know you lord i just i ask right now that uh lord that you would touch them and i would say the prayer lord jesus i ask that you would forgive me of my sins that you would come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. That you would come in and, and, and teach me who you are, Lord, and draw me near to you so that I might serve you. That you would bring me to a place where I can learn more about you and be discipled by you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I just ask, Lord, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for joining today. Like I said, I really hope that you got something out of this. Um, uh, I just want to say um, you can visit us at maytownag.com. Um, and also, if you are wanting to um, give to our ministry, you can also go to AG, uh, maytownag.com to do that. There is a give thing. I thank you again for joining us. God bless you and have a great week.